a non-title match. Do you think the champ's approach changes here, Byron? Well, I certainly hope not. If he plans on coasting in this one just because the title's not on the line, I can tell you it's going to be a long night for him. Mr. McMahon, and Drew will admit that 
He became complacent. Felt like he didn't have to work hard to get to the top. When he got fired, he went away. He got a new attitude. And now he's back, bigger and badder than ever, with a vengeance. Yeah, this new attitude from Drew McIntyre dictates he will take whatever he wants. McIntyre laser focused. And we're now underway with this huge tag team match. the impact. Big head by. Beautiful technique. Tag is made. A little tandem offense on the horizon. Ooh, right to the face. Harsh impact. This might be it. Oh, my. Oh, direct impact to the chest. What a stomp. Good grief. Ooh, what impact. Slam down hard. What a scary drop. Ooh. In order to be a premier tag team, a superstar and their teammate must have that continuity where they're a well-oiled machine inside the ring. I'm talking about classic techniques like cutting the ring in half isolating your opponent, relegating them to your corner, and making frequent tags so that the fresh man is always in the ring. That's how you keep your opponents off balance. This might be it! Oh, my! Corey, a few moments ago, you took us through what it takes for a tag team to be successful. The continuity between tag team partners is crucial. When a team is able to keep one opponent in the ring for an extended period of time without making a tag, they're able to focus their attack on one individual and one body part. And that's when things really start to take shape if you're on the tag team that's in control of the match. When you look at the tag teams who have dominated this business, all of them worked well together as a unit and were able to keep an opponent in the ring long enough to make that adversary the focal point of their assault. When you talk about great tag teams, we can go all the way back to teams like the Tolos brothers, Stevens and Patterson, Stevens and Bockwinkle, the Texas Outlaws, the Briscoes, the Blackjacks, the Andersons, and the list goes on and on. When you're part of a tag team, the two partners have to travel together, train together, eat together, and be completely in sync with one another. Point of the elbow, nailed it. Tag team competition dates back all the way to the early 1900s. Corey, you mentioned some of the classic duos from sports entertainment. He goes for the cover, and Elias avoids the early pin. Not yet, too early. Set him up. Beautiful technique. Vicious knee. Jimmy Uso just timed that perfectly. What a strike. Devastating elbow. What a strike. Right. Now that got those shoulders on the back. you got to believe this one's over. Jimmy Uso is showing here, and I don't think that's the best strategy. Oh, Elias able to avoid damage.
Elias is such a determined competitor. Guys, how can you face off against a performer with such a hungry heart? Oh, let's not beat around the bush. Quick cover from Jimmy Uso. Not much behind that pin attempt. Too soon. Oh, boy, he is rolling. Nailed it. Oh, man, right to the arm. Hyper extend your elbow. Going back to strategy about Elias. While I don't agree with Corey's sentiment about Elias' talent, Byron, would you say that Heckling could work against WWE's most talented musician? There is a proven track record of Elias becoming unnerved, Michael. NXT crowds riled Elias by telling him to drift away, while Jason Jordan and Braun Strowman got in Elias' head by ruining his concerts. I don't like the look in his eye here, folks. His partner wants back in. Yeah, but what you want and what you get are often two very different things. Nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this guy. What is Jimmy Uso's best strategy at this point? And at this point, you have to wonder if he can recover. Oh, what impact! He might just win this thing right here. And Elias might have just secured the victory. Jimmy Uso is showing signs that it could be ending soon. Yeah, Jimmy's got to figure something quick. He needs to find a way to create some space or else this thing's over. Gets the tag. During the rivalry between the Hardy Boys and Cesaro and Sheamus over the Raw Tag Team Championship, the teams became very familiar with one another. In June of 2017, the teams met in a two out of three falls bout on Monday Night Raw. The most important fall in a two out of three falls contest is the first fall. If a team can win the first fall, that sets the tone for the rest of the match and your opponents are playing catch up. He's looking a little wobbly here, guys. Michael, his legs look like they're about to steps connect. That hurt me just watching. The two out of three falls match, you saw the Hardy Boys go at it with Cesaro and Sheamus as a throwback of sorts. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, championship title defenses and grudge matches were often decided in the two out of three falls format. Cesaro and Sheamus didn't waste any time and scored the decisive first fall after a road kick rocked Jeff Hardy. It's Ooze time! Thinking about boom! That hurt. Here's where Jimmy can win this thing. He's going for the pin. This could be it. Drew McIntyre gets the shoulder up. Not even close. We've seen some great tag team action over the years here in WWE, and I can attest that this is no different. And what a reversal from Drew McIntyre. Oh boy, he is rolling. They get dangerous out here, especially when there are no count outs. Not sure how much more McIntyre can take. Well, I can promise it's not much. This is not where he wants to be at this point in his tag team match. If he could just make it to his corner, these guys still have a chance. But if not, I don't see how he can... Oh, man. Jarring headbutt. But can he follow up here? One. Two. Three. What an incredible tag team contest. We've got some highlights from the last one queued up. Here we go. He ain't messing around. Look at him go.
He's getting it done here. He really put on a great show.